Thank you, Jane. Uh, like she said, my name is Bridget Cuddy, and my advisors were Julie Ducius and Julie Tulato. And um, in Granada, Spain, my um, international partner was Teresa Bajo, and I worked in her lab when I was there. And again, um, it's bilingual idiomatic processing in the first language, which, will have, which I will be talking about. So I want to start by just um, starting off with describing what an idiom is. And it's a multi-word expression whose meaning different, differs from the literal meanings of the individual words that made up that phrase. Um, some examples of these that you might be familiar with are to tighten one's belt or to pull one's leg. And you may ask why idioms, and languages all over um, are full of idioms and are spoken all the time in conversation, and so we thought it was important to understand how they're processed. So to begin, um, idioms can be understood both literally and figuratively, and to describe this, I chose an idiom that was, I think, pretty well known, to kick the bucket. Um, the literal meaning, if it's interpreted, is to kick an actual bucket or a pail, um, but figuratively in conversation, it means to die. And also, across languages, um, idioms can be either congruent or incongruent. And to begin a congruent idiom, they have the same meaning uh, between two languages and can be in our word by word translation between these two languages. So, for example, apretarse el cinturón, which means to tighten one's belt. Um, it's directly translated word by word. Um, conversely, incongruent idioms do have the same meaning between those idioms, but the words that compose them are not word by word translations in the two languages. So for example, so for example, tomar el pelo, um, word for word when translated means to grab one's hair, but in English, the words that we use to convey this meaning are to pull one's leg. So this makes it incongruent across the two languages. So now that we understand how um, idioms can be interpreted and um, compared across two languages or understood across two languages, I'd like to get into the research question, which was, what is the time course of activation of the literal and figurative meaning of an idiom? And this is important because we wanted to better understand how L2 speakers um, process congruent and congruent collocations um, which will allow us to sub subsequently design a classroom-based study in which we will train learners' executive function, which is a more malleable cognitive skill um, than other more domain-specific skills. And this will help um, link the suppression of irrelevant information in order to help learners improve um, the process of idioms in the L2. So I want to get now into the experiment. And what we did is we had each participant sit in front of a computer screen. In the main experiment, they were shown um, an idiom. And then there was some sort of time in between before they were shown either a figurative, a literal, or a control word. <laughs> and for here, um, the example is apretarse el cinturón, which um, then, after this idiom was shown, there was either 300 milliseconds or 600 milliseconds before they were shown one of the three words. And ahorrar means um, to save. So figuratively, that makes the most sense with the idiom because apretarse um, el throne is to tighten one's belt and to be more frugal with your money, more smart, um, save money. Um, the literal is aflojar, which is to loosen. And when you think of a belt, you think of maybe either to tighten or to loosen. And the control is alegrarse, which is to be happy. Um, and they had to decide if the word was of English or not, and we studied their reaction time, and if that was dependent on what they were shown. And the results of this study was that, um, if you can see, it might be difficult with how small it is, but the two um, examples on the left are of the congruent idioms at the interval of 300 milliseconds and 600 milliseconds, and the second two are the incongruent idioms at 300 milliseconds and 600 milliseconds. So as you can see in the second and fourth, there's an asterisk, and that shows that um, the literal activation was still um, very prominent. And what's interesting here is that it was quicker than both the control and the figurative. So in the participant's mind, the literal activation was still a process. 
And something surprising about this is that um, with idioms, it can be assumed that um, at some point, the figurative activation should come into play because that's what idioms are all about. Um, and so in the future, if we were to make a change, we would um, make that uh, interval, which is an ISI, um, a little longer to see at what point um, the activation switches from literal to figurative. And so that concludes my study, but I just wanted to talk to you about a little bit of what I did outside of the lab. And um, we did plenty with um, traveling and um, exper experiencing uh, Granada, and these lab members here took us under our, um, their wing and not only helped us in the lab, but also helped us um, outside um, get accustomed to living there and showing us around. And this is a picture of the lab where I was working in, that's what, that was our view. And um, with these lab members, we traveled to a bilingual school with children who were ranging from three to seven years old. And um, what we did is we translated a short story into both um, English, Spanish, and Italian and read this to the children and showed them how important it was to know three languages. And for the younger kids, they just heard people speaking in different languages and it was awesome to them. But it was just something to really inspire them. Um, and then afterwards, we um, attended a conference where the parents and people that um, were in charge of this organization, they talked about how it was being impl implemented and how the success was going. And that was something that was really interesting to see, just the kids' faces light up when we spoke in a different language. Um, that was our outreach program there. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that helped make this possible. It was um, very interesting and just an amazing experience um, that I'm very thankful for. And everyone who made it go seamlessly, I appreciate you. Thank you.